Welcome back to This Week at the Chamber, giving you the top four things you need to know going on this week yeah. here at the Chamber. Amy, welcome. Welcome. Amy. Hope everybody had a good Mother's Day. Oh, it was a great Mother's Day. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we've got a big week this week. Uh, I'm going to be making some presentations. That's first on our list here. We've got, I'll be joining the Board of Realtors on Tuesday for a an update, probably focused more towards housing market and some of the Chamber's efforts or the community efforts in housing and kind of what we've done over the last five years trying to tackle that as a opportunity. And then on Thursday, we'll be giving a Chamber update to the Rotary Club. So we'll be having Western Sizzlin. I'll be having it three times this week. I'll go Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That sounds great. It's a lot of Western sizzling. I'll lucky, have to, lucky guy. Lucky guy. Yeah, at least they have a buffet, so I can I can experiment with a few different things, and they mix it up, but it'll be a Western sizzling kind of week. Shout yeah. out, Thomas Honer and your mm-hmm. crew there. Uh, yeah, okay, then Thursday afternoon, I've got this one too. Thank yes. you. Uh, retail strategy. Oh, this is Wednesday. Doesn't matter when it is. It's internal. Retail strategies. We are learning more about their small business platform before we roll it out to our business community. Retail Strategies is part of Downtown Strategies, Mm -hmm. which is part of the grant that we got from the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District. You've heard us talk about the stakeholder meetings that we did with uh, Jeremy and his team at Retail Strategies. This is one of those tools that comes with it. It's Mm -hmm. an online platform teaching small businesses how to be successful. Yeah. So we're going to test it out. That's what we're going to do on Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we also have coming up on Thursday afternoon, it's going to start at 2 p.m. We're going to have Startup Junkie here, and they're going to go over how um, businesses can apply for government contracts, and that's another way to diversify your business, and um, they'll learn the ins and outs of how to accept those contracts and where to look for them to begin with. So that'll be Tuesday here at the ch- at Thursday here at the chamber at two o'clock and you can register or you can give me a call and I'll get you registered. That's right. And there's been a little bit of confusion here. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about coming to Startup Junkie because you know Startup Junkie does entrepreneurship mentoring, they do um, like one-on-one consulting and give you feedback about your business plan and all this. That's Startup Junkie. This particular workshop is a partnership with the Apex Accelerator, Correct. part of a four-part series that they're doing here in Harrison about readying your business and doing business with the government. It's a lot of U.S. Department of Defense type of uh, curriculum, maybe. It was mm-hmm. very, uh, I would say it was pretty intensive. Like if you know that you want to do business with the government, you'll get a lot of value out of this. Mm-hmm. But if you're a, if you're any other kind of entrepreneur, uh, you're certainly invited to come, but just know that this one may not be targeted for you specifically. Correct. And just in my experience, we've had a little bit better success whenever we get specific items that we talk about We when it comes to small business help. Because if we did like just social media, there's so much to social media now. It's not just Facebook. Correct. It's not just Instagram. There's all the things. And then all like you take that a lot of different ways depending on where people are. So Startup Junkie's doing the same thing. They're getting a little bit more specific with their content, and this partnership with Apex Accelerator is bringing you specifics about government contracting. Yeah, that sounds great. That's a good, that's a good summary. Yeah. And this week is National Hospital Week. Last yeah. week was Nurses Week, and this week is National Hospital Week. Yeah, so happy, happy Hospital Week, happy National Hospital Week. Yes. Yeah, be sure to give your friends a shout-out or your – your friends, a, a thank you. Those Absolutely. who are, that are working in hospital work, uh, we appreciate your service to the people that you serve, certainly in our community. Healthcare is a really important part of the economic development mix and things that we do here at the chamber. Yeah. When people come to a community, they want to see three things. They want to see, they say, show me your schools, mm-hmm. show me your hospital, and show me your downtown. That's kind of the, that's kind of the litmus test about quality of life and area amenities. And we're doing pretty well in those. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that's going on this week, uh, you have a yes, graduate. I do. My daughter Nola is going to be graduating on Sunday from Harrison High School. So we um, we congratulate all the graduates in the Boone County area. Mm-hmm. Valley Springs had theirs this weekend. Mm-hmm. Probably some others uh, this past weekend. But mm-hmm. yeah, there's going to be a few other ones. I'm queuing up something here because it's also. Friday and Saturday, there's something else special happening in Harrison. Yes. And it sounds a little bit like this. 
Crawdad Days. It's Crawdad Days. <laughs> Happening on Friday and Saturday at the mm-hmm. Northwest Arkansas Fairgrounds, District Fairgrounds. Yeah. There'll be the carnival, there'll be vendors, there'll be all sorts of things to do, live music. They've got a whole schedule of events. You can find that on their Facebook page at Crawdad Days in Harrison. Food and fun. Food and fun with Crawdad Days. <laughs> with Crawdad Days. Okay. We have guests this week, uh, multiple, that sat in studio with us. They are the students and the high school sponsor from the FBLA here at Harrison High School, the future business leaders of America. They are about to go to nationals this summer. They had eight students qualify to go to nationals in Orlando, Florida. And here are some of those students talking about the impact that FBLA's had on them. Tell us about what it was like interviewing that many times in a row and maybe what you learned along the way. So each interview is definitely different. Like I've had different challenges with interview and every judge, like every interviewer is different. They have their own personality and you almost have to find what clicks and just see, you know, what is that spark and what makes it more into a conversation than just an interview. That's probably my favorite part is just seeing what really just makes it more inside exciting and more enjoyable. Do you feel like you, like at the end of it, did they give you the job or did they just say, hey, you scored this sort of thing? Like did they say, actually, we'd hire you? Or what um, kind of feedback did you get along the way? Usually it's just like, thanks, um, and then we go on. But at the end, I'll get my rubric back on my cover letter, my resume, and then at the interview, and there's notes about different stuff. Mm-hmm. So you could constructively? Yes, I can like criticize and prepare and like focus. Week. Like I know after districts, I need to ask more questions about the role and stuff like that. And so that's what I prepared for for state. Excellent. Excellent. What else, what else might you have learned from FBLA, whether it's this project specifically or like things that happen inside or outside of the classroom? Honestly, it was really big on leadership and how to read people because there is so many different types of people in this world. Like what Lauren said, people have their own way that they click with stuff. You can say something totally different to one person than another, and they're going to take it a completely different route, even though you could be telling them the same thing. So being able to do this and having all of these competitions, you have to be able to read your judges and just be able to make sure that you cater your presentation to them, and that's how you're going to succeed through it. Hmm. It's like a, almost like emotional intelligence, too, or some version of like, I'm sure when you're talking, you're watching facial expressions, right? Because you're not reading from a script. And so if they make a very like inquisitive look, you're like, oh, maybe I needed to give more detail there. Or maybe I will give more detail there yeah. about something. It's, that's a really good skill to learn of, of yeah. feeding off somebody. There's nothing more scary than a judge when it makes the weirdest face. And like, and the rice down on a piece of paper is the scariest thing. Mm. But it's, I'm very like what like Lauren said, it's really really about trying to make your presentation so exciting. Like you don't want like a dull presentation, someone just like literally just doing nothing but data and data. You have to add some humanization to it, make it more like fun and enjoyable. And that was really cool. I really like what you said about yeah. that. That was really nice, Lauren. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, so, I made sure to add some jokes to my my speech. I wanted like, I met when I went my presentation at state. I made one of my judges laugh really hard. We had to, like stop stop the time real quick. He had to, like regain his focus and like, hey, go again. And I had to remember where I was. It was crazy, but I was wow. yeah. It was kind of fun. Yeah, that is a fun moment. What would you want somebody to know about the impact that their funding might have on this trip? Um, I'd like to say that it is like a once in a lifetime chance for us mm-hmm. to network. As high school students, we don't get many opportunities like this to go to such a big crowd and meet people from different walks of life, especially from being from rural Arkansas and Harrison. Yes. Um, this is such an exciting moment for us, especially, you know, being as a senior, it's my last chance. And I'm really excited to be able to do this. Yeah, and like last year, only two people qualified for nationals in our school. And this year, we're like, it's eight. It's just like we've grown so much. And like Lauren said, it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity to, you know, meet people from all over our country. And like we said, the world people from China are coming and you never know who you can meet there, the opportunities you can have, the connections you can make. Yeah, it truly is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And also for nationals, we're going to go to Orlando Universal, um, Universal Studios, which mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited for, I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. You should be. Yeah. I've never been, so. Can't wait to ride the roller coasters. We'll take some pictures for you, Wilson. Yeah, I, we better go to the Simpsons world. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what else might you add? Um, well, 
So like Lauren said, with us being seniors, it's our last year to experience something like this. And with me personally, I'm going into college into the business field. So I'll be going out at Arkansas Tech where they have an FBLA chapter out there. So being able to experience all this and making sure that I have these connections to support me, it's an amazing thing that's going to help boost me in my career and my life. Hmm. And I would say for the school district or for the community too, there's something about, there's a level of pride too of having Mm -hmm. students that have competed at all these levels and now have made it to the national stage. Like we want you to go and be successful and bring some of that pride back here because we're all we're all going to be rooting for you, cheering you on, uh, maybe living vicariously through photos of y'all on the roller coasters, yes. all of those things. That'll be very fun. So we, we wish you the best. Uh, Thank you. What other closing wisdom or jokes or comments might you have for, for the viewers? I knew Bannon was going to be ready with one. Just well, please give us money. Oh. We'll, we'll accept anything. Pennies, um, pesos, I guess. We'll just... Please give us money. It makes a difference. And it makes a difference. Yeah. Every penny counts. Every it'll, penny it'll counts. It'll all be worth it. It's p- all going to go to a good cause. Us winning. Hopefully. Winning. Because plane rides are not cheap. I'm no. going to tell you right now. <laughs> plane rides are not cheap. Yeah. Wait, well, thanks for joining me in yeah. studio today. Uh, I enjoyed catching up with y'all before and mm-hmm. I'm sure after we get off the mics here. But uh, best of luck at Nationals. And for those watching, uh, contact. Matthew Massey to make donations. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at you off camera. Harrison High School, FBLA in the memo, yeah, I'll get, I'll get Nationals trip, Bannon that? Jones, B A N. No, no, no. O N. <laughs> no, FBLA. Uh, and yeah, we're proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.